just giddy, 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 giddy excited to be talking to you about this today because it's going to be amazing. Today, the focus is going to be on recoding values. So maybe you've got some reverse scaled items and you need to reverse scale them. That's what this is going to be about. So let's get right into it. One thing I saw recently, like in Twitter or something, is somebody said they always make a statement that says D underscore original or data underscore original. So they always have an original copy of their data. And I think that's good practice to do. And so the first uh, function we're going to learn is the recode function. And what the recode function will do is it will recode values. Wow. Somebody named this quite cleverly. So let me just give you a, a few simple examples so you can start to see how you might use them for your data. So line 25 here, we've got a character vector and this is a new function you haven't seen. Sample basically says just sample from a vector tells you how many samples you want and that means sample with replacement. So if I were just to run that, we would see that we have a vector that has C, C, A, B, A. Basically, it's just randomly sampling from A, B, and C. Uh, you probably won't end up using that unless you're doing some sort of data simulations of some sort. So we got this character vector, but it came in and by golly, by goose, by noodle, we have a problem. We've got A, B, and C when we need one, two, and three. Holy moly. Call the data police. Well, one thing you can do is you could use the recode function. So the first argument is the vector you're trying to recode. The second argument is actually, well, the second through however many is basically the rules that you're gonna follow. So here I'm telling it that anything that was A is going to be one. Anything that was B is going to be two. Anything that was C is going to be three. And if I run line 26 there, I get, wow, look at that. My C's became threes and my A's became ones. Wow, it's like magic. Or maybe instead of saying, oh no, we need one through three, we need alpha, beta, and Charlie. Like when you're talking on the phone and you're trying to tell somebody how to spell your last name and you need to know what the, what, whatever, what are these things called? I'm gonna find out. It's called a phonetic alphabet. I knew that off the top of my head. So we're going to convert our A, B, and C to the alpha, the phonetic alphabet thingy. And if I do that, notice that all my, all those things that were C became Charlie, everything that was A became alpha, etc. So that's pretty cool. Now, uh, things may be a little bit different if you start with a numeric vector. So I'm gonna use the same sample thing. Again, you'll probably never need to use this if you're just doing regular old data analysis. But I am sampling the numbers one through three and I'm giving 10 samples and each time it's gonna randomly choose one. And so I've got three, three, one, three, two, three, 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 lots of threes and that'll happen. And so now I'm going to use the same recode function. And again, my first argument is my vector that I'm trying to recode, um, except this time I want to change all my ones into something else. So in the first instance, I'm gonna change all ones to an A, all twos to a B, and all threes to a C. Now notice something funky is happening here. All the numbers are surrounded by back ticks and you find those on your, uh, or like right to the left of the one. And you got to do shift to do that, at least on my keyboard. And why are the back ticks necessary? I'm not going to go into details of why, uh, because for you to understand why it's necessary, it would be a lot of information that you really don't need to know. But just remember that rule that if you are renaming from a number to another number or to a letter, you have to have the back ticks there. And so in this case, I'm saying all ones become A's, all twos become B's, and all threes become C's. And if I run that, look at that beautiful output. So all my threes became C's, and all my ones became A's, and etc. And of course, you could, oh, that's the same thing. I'm gonna recode all my ones to be ones, but let's say you wanted to reverse code it. So all my ones become threes, all my twos are gonna stay twos, so that wouldn't be necessary, but I'll keep it in there just for fun, because it is fun. 
And if we were to recode that, notice our threes, which were here, became ones, our ones became threes, and our twos stayed exactly the same. So again, to summarize, the first argument is going to be the thing or the vector that you are trying to recode. The second argument is the rules for recoding. And remember that when we do that, uh, if you're going from a number to a character, you have to go back ticks for the numbers or the numbers to a number. Anytime you're going from a number to anything, you have to surround the numbers and back ticks. But uh, yeah, when you're going from a, a character to a number or character to a character, you don't have to have back ticks. But if you're going from a character to a character, the second character has to have quotes. And by the way, there's a logic to all this, but I don't want to overwhelm you with information. So I'm not going to tell you the logic, but there is a logic just in case you were worried. And I know you were because these are the things that keep you up at night. Anyway, so now that we got the basics behind recode, let's see how that would look within a pipe operator or within a mutate statement, actually. So we're going to take the D original and then we're going to mutate it such that gender is equal to a recoded gender. We're just gonna say recode gender, and then what was a one gets a male, what was a two gets a female, and what was three gets a binary. And then at the end of this, I'm gonna include another uh, pipe statement and then a head. Uh, just, I mean, if I were to save this as my data set, I wouldn't do head, but I'm just doing that just so you can see what it looks like. And so what was a one, actually, let me just do head D underscore original, just so you can see what's going on. So the first person had a one and the second column had a one, and now we have recoded it. So the first person is male and the second person is male. So it worked, awesome, great. Let's go ahead and look at another example. So uh, notice in our data set here, all of our, numbers somehow were converted to letters. So maybe you were doing a Qualtrics survey and you had um, these items on a scale of one, on a one to five Likert scale and item one was A, B, C, D, or an E and Qualtrics, instead of putting those as numbers, it put them as letters. So how would you transform them back to numbers? Well, this is how you would do it. So D underscore original, and then we're going to mutate the MSS one variable to be equal to a recoded MSS1 variable, where A is equal to one, B is equal to two, C is equal to three, D is equal to four, and E is equal to five. And again, I'm just gonna end that with a head statement, just so you can see what happens after I do that. And notice that what was a, where is it, D has now become a four, what was a C became a three, etc. So we have done that for MSS I1, which is awesome and fantastic. And that was a lot of fun, but it's not gonna be so much fun if we have to do this for all these items. And this is a simple example. Uh, a lot of people have much larger surveys, so they might have a hundred columns. That would be very, very tedious to write a hundred recode statements. So you might be asking, hey, you, our guy, how do I go about doing it to a group of columns instead of one column at a time? Boy, that is a insightful question that I'm going to answer right now. We're going to use the across function. And so we use the across function within the mutate statement to specify how we are going to handle multiple columns. So let's jump right to an example. I'm just going to create a simple data set just so you can see a simple case of doing this. So this has two columns, number one, number two, or I'm sorry, two numeric columns and then a uh, character column. So number one is one, two, three, number two is four, five, and six, and then letter is A, B, and C. That there be an informative data set. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the mutate statement just as we did before, but now instead of like before we said mutate and then said one column or, and then we specified one column is equal to and then we're referencing one column. Now we're going to use the across statement. And so the across statement will allow us to do a function to apply a function over multiple columns. And it takes two arguments. The first argument, like I say here, is the column and just like um, or the columns and just like when we used the select statement in a previous video, 
we were able to use the colon to specify a range of columns, or we could say starts with or contains or ends with. We could use all the same things for a cross, which is fantastic. And so in this instance, we are saying number one through number two, which is just gonna take the first columns. And then the second argument is the function that you want to apply. Now, this is a little more complicated than what you would normally do. Uh, it needs to start with a tilde sign. And a tilde basically tells R to pass these columns that you select to a function. That's all it's saying is pass whatever you get from these columns to the following function. And then it's also probably going to require a dot X. And so dot X is referencing the column is how you tell R that you're referencing the columns here. So it's basically saying take that column and then add two to it. So if we were to do that here, not surprisingly, one, two, three becomes three, four, and five, and then four, five, and six becomes six, seven, and eight. So those are the two argument for a cross. It's a little different than how we use functions, but there is a reason why we have to do it that way. And again, I'm not gonna go into it because it's, it's, uh, it's not complicated, but it's information that you probably don't need to know right now. So now let's go ahead and use the across function on our data set. So we're going to take D underscore original, and then we're going to mutate and we are going to keep the same code that we did before because we still want to recode the gender variable. But now we are going to use the across statement. I'll put it in one line. And again, the across takes two arguments. The first argument is the columns that you are going to apply this function to. And then the second argument begins with a tilde and it tells R exactly what you're going to do to those columns. So I'm saying tilde again, because it needs to start with a tilde and then recode. And then I'm saying, so before, let's find another recode in there. Oh, right there. So before we said MSSI is equal to recode MSSI. Now, because we're specifying more than one columns, instead we reference it with the dot X. So there's our first argument. And then the second argument as before is the rules for recoding. So we're basically saying, take all these columns and anywhere where you see an A, uh, recode it to be a one, anywhere where you see a B, recode it to be two, etc. And so if I ran this line of code and then as before, I'm ending it with a head just so I could see the first six rows of it, notice that our A, B, C's, D's and E's are gone. And now we have one, two, threes and fours and fives. So that's lovely. And so that's how you would transform something from that you get from Qualtrics that was in uh, like categories and change it to numbers. But let's say you want to reverse code something. How do we do it? Well, you still use the same recode statement. And so let's say for this data set, the variables MSSI 1, MSSI 3, 7, and 8 need to be reverse coded and DEP underscore three and DEP underscore six need to be recoded. And so I'm going to, now I'm actually going to assign it to a data set just for fun. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do the exact same code before, but I'm just gonna add one more mutate statement. So I'm right here, I'm saying take the original data set and then mutate or create a new column called gender, which is equal to a recoding of the old gender column where one is equal to male, two is equal to female, etc. And then across the columns, I'm just reviewing what we've already done before. Across the columns, MSSI one through SF nine, recode all the A through E's to be one through fives. Then I'm going to take the values that I need to reverse code MSS one, MSSI one, two, seven, and eight, as well as depression three and six and everything that was a one is now going to be a five. Everything that was a two is going to be a four. Everything that was a three is still gonna be a three, so I skip that, but everything that was gonna be a four is now going to be equal to a two. Everything that was a five is going to be equal to a one. Glorious, and if I run that bit of code, no errors, that's always fun, and then head D, and we get our new column which is great. And just to make sure things that worked, we could go D, oh, there it is, ha <laughs> We could go D MSSI head, 
So I'm gonna take the new data set and we got two, three, four, two, four, four, but compare that to what I had before. So before it was a D, which would have been a four, except we reverse coded it and now it became a two. So that ended up working out, which is good. Of course, uh, we could look at what was a three, should still be a, a three or a C, what was, anyway. Yeah, and if we were to look at, um, it's always a good idea to check more than one, just to make sure. I'm gonna look at depression three and what used to be a B should have been converted to a two, but now because it's reverse scaled, it is a four. So that seems to be working and then the threes are gonna stay a C. So that seems to be working as well. So awesome, we did it. So with that, let's review our lovely learning objectives. Number one, know how to use the recode function in R. And again, we use the recode function to take values within a vector and change them from, change every instance of one value to a different type of value. Like all ones need to become fives. Number two, know the rules for going from numbers to characters and vice versa. So remember when we are using recode, if we ever have, if we're ever going from a number to anything else, we need to put the numbers in back ticks. If it's going from character to anything else, we don't know. And then characters are specified within quotes. And then the thing that it's being changed to is going to be quotes. So if we're going from A to B, we would go A equals quote B. Objective number three, know how to use the across function. And again, we use the across function so that we could apply a mutate statement across multiple columns. Number four, the arguments for the across column. So the first argument is the columns that you're going to apply the function across. And then the second argument is the function. And number five, know the rules that we need to follow when specifying a function within across. And remember, we need a tilde at the beginning, and then we need to use dot X when we are referring to the column we're trying to modify. And so for the practice today, we're gonna have a bigger practice at the next video, but for this video, what I want you to do is to reproduce what I have done using the same data set, which I have linked in the description, as well as the code that I use. But don't look at my code, practice for yourself. And yeah, until next time, peace out.